Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Nancy from nancybadijo.com and welcome to another series of XC Shop Critique. And today I am going to critique the store My Heart and Soul Gifts um, by the owner Milo. So Milo, thank you for letting me do a critique on your XC Shop. My first impression um is that it's a very cute shop with things that I would be interested in buying. Um, and I actually think your products are very, very nice. And there's a market for them as well. And it's also a market that's very oversaturated, almost like my market. So it can be hard to get sales. And hopefully with the critiques that I'm going to give you today, um, you'll be able to implement that and hopefully increase your views, increase engagement, and therefore also increase sales. So let's go ahead and get started. I did an audit on this listing here on this little top bag is really cute and let's start with the first thing photography so photography is like the number one thing that shoppers see before the price or before they read any at the listing description so it's very important that the picture that you take um, is clear um, it goes with your with your brand it, it looks cohesive to everything else that you have um, you actually have right now at the current moment three, um, four pictures, one standing and then side to side. Um, I would recommend trying to use all 10 available spots of the pictures. I know it can be a little bit repetitive, but you could take the picture in different angles in the sense of you got four angles right now. You could take one maybe with someone holding it. You could take a picture looking inside the bag, maybe add like a couple things in there so people could see how big the size is. Um, maybe have somebody walk with the bag or hold the bag a certain way. Um, you could also add call to actions on your images. So you could add an image that says, click below to see machine items if you have machine items. So click below to read listing description. You could also have someone, um, you could also make someone favorite your item. So you could say, um, click click here and then have like a little arrow pointing to the heart. Click here to um, favor this item. The nice thing about somebody either liking your store, like favoring your store, or favoring an item is that XC later retargets them again with that item. So if you ever put this item in sale, they, that person, whoever liked your item, will get a notification saying, um, my heart and soul gifts have put the embroidered purple and white tongue on sale and they'll get an email or here are some of your favorites or your favorite store has added additional products. So it's a good way to have customers come back to your store subconsciously without them knowing that. Um, so I will add a call to action, but I definitely will add additional pictures. Your pictures are nice, but I would suggest a light box like the picture down here. It looks a little bit dark. It looks like this is a um, one of those um, that you put and you see how it goes up. I can kind of see that this is like, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's almost like a, a little board that you have with, with different wall paper or like a wallpaper, I guess, which is nice, but it still looks a little bit dark. I don't know if you ever seen like what a light, bo light box looks like. Let me, let me Google this so you can kind of see. But the nice thing about a light box is that it distributes the the light evenly and you'll have a nice white background and it helps from people getting distracted from the actual item. So this is a white box here. And you can find them for cheap, like this one is $15. So you put your product in there, as you can see. And they have, this one has a, a black background. They have this one with a white. And basically you just put your product in there you can take a picture even with your iPhone and the background will be all white. So it just makes it really look really nice and clear. Um, these, these are very helpful when you have items like the ones that you currently sell at your shop. So I would highly recommend um, getting a, a light box or maybe taking the pictures outside for natural light um, because this one does look a little bit dark. Um, but that's just a suggestion. Your pictures overall are nice, but they could look a lot better. Um, the second thing would be SEO. So you've done a really good job at putting your SEO keywords here um, or doing your SEO and then filling out the entire uh, title. 
Um, for SEO best practices, um, it's important to put the most important keywords in the front of the sentence since it has the most influence on SEO and clicks. I do suggest to change all your tags. Um, a lot of your tags um, are, are too competitive, like too many people are using it, the exact keyword. So therefore, it's going to be really hard for you to rank for those keywords organically. And if you were to run an ad, like an XE ad, your cost per click is going to be a lot higher um, since a lot of people are also bidding for that same keyword. So for instance, if you were to type in this keyword here on XE, let me show you what I mean. So if you go to Etsy and you type in the keyword, I'm sorry, I'm a little um, congested today. You'll see that 16,000 other people are using that same keyword. That's too much competition. A lot of people think if I use a word that I'll use a keyword that everybody else is using, it's competitive. That's the right way to do SEO. And it's actually the opposite. You want to find a, a keyword that's not too competitive that you could still rank organically. And therefore, if you were to run an ad, you don't have to pay a high cost per click. Versus with this one, one, your chances of getting found organically are almost slim to none. And two, if you were to run an ad, it's going to cost you a lot more. Um, you want to make sure that... Um, so Also, some of your keywords... Um, this is another thing I was going to say like this one here, two-tone top. Um, X, the tool I'm using right now is called XE Rank. And as you can see, there's no data. The reason why there's no data there is because not too many people are using that keyword. So when, they're, when there's not a large volume of search for that particular item, it doesn't even come back with data because it's just not a good keyword to use. Once you do your SEO, let's say you do all your SEO again, um, I would say get all of them with the exception of this one here and you could keep that one, but I would say change all of them because at the current moment, SEO is very vital. It's important for your store to have it done correctly. That way you could drive, you could drive traffic to your store. Once you do your keyword search again, and you could do, um, XE rank by going to tools and then tools, keywords, and you could find keywords. I will use all the ones that are low competition in the beginning of your title and the medium ones will come after that. And you fill in as many as you can and make sure that when you put the keywords in your title that you're using a comma to separate them. It's important that you, if this is a keyword in broader purple, comma, white tot, comma. Make sure you do that because then Google knows and XE, the XE search and Google and any other search engine is going to understand that's one keyword, that's another keyword. When you have it like this, it seems like a long tail keyword. So just make sure that you separate it using um, commas in between. But I do recommend that you change all your tags. Right now, um, the keywords that you, ca you currently have are too competitive. And all you have to do is you could take this keyword here. Let's say this is the main one that you wanted to use. You put it up here. You do a search, and it's going to auto-populate keywords for you. And from this screen, so I'm just waiting, sorry for that. It's going to show you that even that one is so overpopulated. You see, like, so many people use it. So you're going to have to be very creative at coming up with different um, wording of it. So this is a bohemian top. So that one will be a good one, but if it doesn't match your your top, then you don't want to use that one. Custom wedding top. See, um, ultimate top. I don't know if that one even makes sense in my opinion, but sheer top. So I'm, I'm assuming this one will have the word sheer on it. Two to top bag. So you gonna have to go through these and kind of see which ones match what you currently sell at your shop and just use the ones that are yellow and green. Stay away from the red ones. There's too much competition. So therefore, it's going to be very, very hard for you to even rank for them. And this is what you do. If, if that keyword doesn't work, you're going to have to put white in front of it, right? And then search or put white, um, purple because that was the color of yours. Like do different stuff like that. But just keep doing that until you find additional keywords that you could use 
um, they are not so competitive. And as you can see, you're in the same boat like me. That's very uh, saturated market. So you got to keep doing that. You got to come up with clever ways of, of calling that top band. <laughs> Excuse me. So once you do that, and you, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time to research and kind of go through it and find stuff. Trust me, I do this all the time, and it can be tedious sometimes because it's so competitive. But you'll find those keywords. Once you do that, then you will need to go back and change them um, and make sure that you, you change all the bad ones to the good ones. The next thing I was going to say was you did a great job overall using all this space, um, not as, as well as, as your title, but you did it on the writing, on the listing description. And you did use all 13 tags. I do see a lot of stores that only use like five or six, and you went ahead and did all of them. So that, that's pretty good. That's a good start. The next thing I was going to say is the listing description. Um, you have to be really careful at, right here what you write, because this is going to be the snippet that when somebody Googles your, like let's say they Google embroidered a purple and white top bag, this is going to show up on the snippet. Um, so you want to make sure that that when somebody finds your item, um, the meta description, which is the bottom part, is called snippet or the bottom part where you usually click on Google. You want to make sure that it has your keywords in there, but that also it makes sense and it's a nice description of what you're buying. So for instance, if somebody was to, let's say you rank for this keyword, this is how your, this is how the, it would look on, on Google. Let me show you. This is what somebody sees on Google. And you see how here it shows the little dot, 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 please read F dot, 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 24. See, so you have to remove that. This That's coming out because of this right here. See? So this is why for SEO best practices, you always put the keyword here. That's what they mean by that. Put the keyword in the listing description right on the top. Put the main keywords here. The reason is because this is the preview that people get on Google. And if you have, please read below and that's how you roll or you have something else, it doesn't look um, enticing for someone to click on the actual listing and go to your Etsy shop. So you would need to change this right here. I would just remove this part here. And just add, um, maybe, um, you know, add your store name or just re reward it, but just remove this part right here. So that's important to do that when you have a chance. Um, another thing I was going to say is I will break down the listing description into sections. So for instance, I will put a little, you know, put the description of what, what they're buying with, with your keyword. And then put like little sections like what they're buying, the size, the color, how to take care for it, how to order, shipping policies, return policies, how to contact you. Um, now you do have here, the seller's not responsible for lost or stolen packages. If there are any issues after the package is accepted by the post office, please contact. Uh, I would kind of remove that. Or what you could do is reward it a little bit so it could sound a little bit nicer. You could actually put a link to the post office and, you know, just say, if you need further assistance, please reach out here. And then you could put a link to the contact page to the post office. You could put a link to the tracking number here. And then it looks like you're going out of your way to help the customer versus like, oh, well, I already shipped this, so now you got to talk to someone else. And it just sounds more professional. Not professional, it just sounds more like you're helpful. And people actually like that. So if you were to kind of change that around a little bit, I think it will work a little bit better. Um, I will also reword the bottom the, the bottom part. Oh, well, that one, what I would just said. But um, another thing I was going to say, down here, I will kind of reword this. I will put... Um, Thank you for, for viewing my listing, um, at your name, and then at your contact information, which is this, which is great. Maybe even add a, a professional email, like if you have an email, maybe add your email there. Contact me at blah, 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 if you have any questions. And then another thing I would say is um, 
put a backlink to your page here. Because a lot of times people would go here, they read the list in the description and they click back. But what that does is takes them out of your Etsy shop. And now they're in the Etsy search result and like in the first page of Etsy. So if you do a backlink here, which will be like the link of your main page, your home page of Etsy, um, the nice thing about that is that they stay longer in your shop. And the longer you could retain the customer browsing your items, the more chances of them buying your actual product. So I would just add a backlink at the bottom. So I would just kind of reward this again. I will put the description of what they're buying with the keywords. I will put description, size, color, how to care for it. I will put shipping policy, return policy, how to contact me, and thank you for the order, your name, and blah, 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 and a backlink. Something simple like that. I make sure that everything is when you are writing your listing description is clear that make sure you write a killer, I call it killer listing description. That means that any question that a potential buyer might have, you are answering every single question with the listing description. Um, that would be a credibility. It will avoid unnecessary messages to you asking your questions because you have it there. And people potentially, it will increase your sales as well. So make sure you're clearly outlining your shipping, your return, your return policy, um, and anything else additional that you would like to include about shipping. So the next thing I was going to say is your category of your product. You did a really good job. Um, you put it in the right category. So that's a great thing. If you are ever um, just um, having a hard time understanding where it should go, um, XCRank has a really cool tool if you click category tool. And if you click there and you put the item that you're trying to find a category, um, it will tell you the majority of people what they use for that category. And this is a quick way to kind of know, like right here, it tells you bags and purses and tops. 57% 50, of people put it there. And that's what you want to do. You don't want to put it on accessories or in the wrong category, but you did a good job with yours. So just wanted to give you that, that props because you did good on that. Um, great job at, you know, having a logo, having a profile picture, having a picture as well here. Um, also having a tagline. I don't know if this is like a baby picture I'm thinking it is. Oh, it is. It's so cute. Uh, what I would do is because this is your shop, I would change this picture, maybe have a picture of you yourself. And if you want to include a picture of your baby, I would just do a picture of you holding the baby. Um, that way people could know who Milo is. And I think that would be the only change I would, I would do. But I understand why you're having a baby picture. I just had a baby, so I understand. Um, you don't currently have an About Me section. Um, I honestly feel like I recommend adding the About Me because it does instill trust in buyers. Um, just, you know, the about me should include a, uh, like a, a brief description of your store, of your products and services, of your hours. Uh, it helps build credibility, it increases trust with your customers. You can even um, upload pictures of your studio to showcase your workspace or your office. Um, you could, you know, put pictures um, to create a story if your kids help you. Or you're working and you have your baby. That's a beautiful story. You could put that up there and people will relate to you. Oh, they're parents too. And, and that might persuade them to buy from your shop as well. Because they feel like, oh, that's awesome. They work from home. They have a baby. I'm kind of in the same boat. And they might support your business more. But it's very important that you do that. Because even though this is an online business. You, and a lot of people say, I'm not going to take XE as a business. Because it's my hobby. You are trying to build something that you're going to make a lot of money from. You're trying to build something that hopefully maybe you want to quit your regular job. So therefore, you have to put, you have to use all these tools and all these, um, you have to fill out your entire Etsy profile and optimize it correctly, the right way. That way you could increase your business and that's the way to do it. You have to do that Um for instance, many I know, I know so many shops that have been featured feature in BuzzFeed because as a result, they had their shop optimized, right? They had everything filled out. 
and they had such an amazing Abados page that BuzzFeed reached out and said, hey, we would like to feature you on our website. And because of that, they have gotten thousands of sales. So that's what I'm saying. Stuff like that, you have to think out the box. You know, just just sum it up into different sections. How you got started. Um, you could do it one, two sentences. It doesn't have to be long. You do have 5,000 characters to share how your business was founded. You could do a video if you don't want to do, if you don't want to write anything, you could do a video as well. You could upload pictures, like I said. You can list any anyone that directly works with you or helps you run the shop. You could also add production partners. Uh, and these are partners who like physically produce your items, but who are not part of your Etsy shop. You have to do, you do have to announce them based on Etsy rules. I mean, but overall, it's important for you to add that. You did do a good job of adding your links to your social media platforms. I do think that's important to do that because a lot of people um, might not, you know, per se, um, use Facebook, but they'll use it Pinterest or vice versa. So I say that you do all social medias. You have all of them. So good for you for adding that. Uh, shipping policy. Once again, it's the same thing. Make sure to write a clear coherent shipping policy that details your process. This can increase the likelihood and trust of a potential buyer. Um, make sure you have your location set up. I believe you do actually. Yeah, you do. This is great um, because that way local shoppers could find you on Google, on Google Plus. So that helps. And um, you can offer international shipping. If you've never done it, I do recommend to do it. Because you will tap into more potential buyers, and you could, you know, you could also offer um, reduced shipping if somebody buys additional products. So if somebody's buying two or three products, you could kind of bundle it together and then offer a reduced shipping. A lot of people like that, and it will increase your sales. And you could put that in the shipping policy that if somebody buys additional additional items, just to let you know before they buy. And then you could do like a bundle package and you probably make a lot of money because a lot of people might be like, well, that makes more sense than paying three separate shipping. At the end of the day, just clearly outline your shipping, insurance, return, return policy, anything that could come back and bite you in the butt. Because a lot of times people don't read and you having this information there, it's like a security for your store. That way, if they do open a case against your store, you could provide proof that everything's written down, that you have a, a clear, precise shipping policy, and that way um, they don't take any legal action against you or or you won't have any strikes against, you, against your Etsy shop. So it's very important to do that. Pricing, make sure that your prices um, include the cost of the material, labor, and profit after fees, but that they are competitive with pricing to other shops. I do believe your pricing is good. I was comparing to other listings on Etsy and they are about the same price or even higher. So you're actually in the low price, which is nice. So in the pricing, I don't really necessarily think you have to change anything. And my only suggestions from here on would be one, expand your reach by offering international shipping if you don't do so right now. Have the item descriptions to speak and attract the target the target market. So put in a little description, making sure everything's clear. Um, offer multiple price points. So you kind of do that right now. You have different pricing. All of them are anywhere from like 15 to 24. So that, that is multiple pricing. So you do offer that. And if you still not, let's say you can't add more, more stuff or this is the only things that you have currently at the moment. Um, what I would do is view which items in your shop have the least views, favors, and sales. And then compare that with the items that have the most views, the most favor, and sales. And use that information to create like a robust line around that particular items that have um, the most views, favors, and sales. So if you do really good, let's say this bag, you sell a lot of them. Then I would create a line, like additional bags, similar to that one, maybe with similar sayings, because obviously this is what's driving you the most money. So whatever's driving you the most money, take that 
and create a, 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 a robust line. What I mean by that is create a line of the same product, maybe with different colors, maybe different sayings, but very similar. And you will increase your sale or quadruple your sale, to be honest with you. Um, this is how a lot of people do it. They take the best top selling products that they sell. They create additional matching products with for those products and they increase their sales a lot. So that's one way to increase your sales. Um, and make sure that every listing that you have either link to other items. You could say click here to view um, similar items or matching items and click here for homepage. Make sure you have those backlinks in installed because that, that will keep them longer in your page or browse more. Um, and it's great for you because the chances of them, of them buying are a lot higher now because they're, they're staying longer in your page. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's go into your Instagram. So your Instagram is really cute. And I like the fact that it does look... <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. I like the fact that it's very cohesive. It looks like your store. If I clicked on your Instagram, I wouldn't be confused. Like, wait, did I? Am I in the same store? Am I following someone else? You have the branding. You have your name. What I would recommend is one to sign up for. Um, there's a there's a thing called Linktree. It's a tool. Let me type it in so you can see it, and I'll leave a a link below as well. Linktree is this right here. And it's nice. It's um you could do the free one, and you don't pay anything, or you could do six dollars. And Linktree, what well, basically what it does, it lets you add. You see how here you have follow us, XC, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, because you're doing that because XC, I mean Instagram only lets you put one link here. Well, with Linktree, you can add multiple links. So this is my page here, and when you click on it. You see, I have multiple links. I have my blog, contact me, my YouTube, Etsy seller group, blah, 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 blah. So you'll be able to do this. You'll be able to add your Etsy store, your Facebook, your Pinterest, your Google Plus, and whatever other links you want. You can add unlimited links, and the free one you don't have to pay anything for. If you do the $6 one, it is worth it because in addition to adding unlimited links, you could do so much more, like track your traffic. You could start a newsletter subscription. I mean, so many things that you could do with it, but I highly recommend doing that because one, you don't, you're not paying anything for the free one, and then you can optimize the traffic from Instagram to different destinations. So it's really, really nice. I would recommend that. Um, I looked over your keywords. You did a really good job with them. Um, I don't know if you did it on purpose or if you or if you just happened to pick re really good keywords. But um, for instance, if you click on rope handles. Um, this is a low keyword, which means only 831 people have used it. It's not as competitive as something that, like hashtag love, that might have like a million people using it. And the nice thing about it is that you did this posting 20, I think it was like when I last checked, it was like 21 hours. So now it says one day because a couple hours has passed. So you did this one day ago and look, you're still on the top of the search. If you were to use a popular keyword like... Uh, let's say Saturday, let me see, Saturday vibes, right? You see how so many people use that keyword? It's ridiculous. So let's say this was your posting here, this one right here with the three ladies. As you can see, within seconds, uh, that picture just moved to the right already twice. And if you keep refreshing this page within, I would say, five minutes, that keyword is going to keep going down and down. Right now, it's still there. So you kind of have to pay, like keep doing it. And you'll, eventually, you'll see it. But this key, this picture is going to keep pushing down to the feed. And this is what happens when you use keywords that are overpopulated. Now, this is the, up here, it's called top post. And for, for you to be featured up here, you have to have, one, a lot, a lot of likes. Two, a lot of engagement, like a lot of comments, um, and a lot of impressions. So if you have that, you will get featured up here. You stay up here until someone else knocks you down. However, if you don't have that, then your post will appear here. But eventually, 
your post keeps going down and down and down to the feed on the bottom where nobody will see it. You see how it keeps moving? So we've been here maybe in a minute and three, six, nine people have posted a picture already. So that picture is going to keep pushing down. So within 15 minutes, no one will see your picture again. So you don't want to use keywords that are too high. This is the same thing like XE. If you think about it, you don't want to use keywords. These are keywords. They're hashtags, but they're keywords. They are too competitive because eventually no one will see your post. You want to use keywords like the one that you had that you will stay at a high, um, that you will last longer. And then the likelihood of someone clicking on your picture and going to your page are a lot higher than when somebody sees it for a few minutes and then it's pushed to the bottom and no one else sees it again. So I think you did a really good job with that. My only suggestion would be at the link tree so you could put these links in there and then just remove it from here or you could say follow us on social media click bio link to view links and then you did a good job you're using um, a lot of hashtags that's very important right here um, this hashtag has a space so it's not really a hashtag right now which is the name of your store other than that pretty good job with the Instagram now Facebook and Google Plus are kind of very similar one thing I noticed is that you have, um, when you put a post up here, um, when you put the link, it auto populates the picture and it auto populates the meta description. So to be honest with you, you don't have to keep this up here. So let's say I did that on your, well, I can't post on yours, but you have to remove that from there. Don't keep that there. So you, let's say you take the link, you put it there, the picture auto populates, this auto populates. Remove that and put a caption. Never put a picture with no caption and a link on the top. Don't do that. It doesn't look nice. Um, so I would just put here maybe the same thing you have here. Uh, I'll actually rewrite it and say, you know, whatever the day is. Get this beautiful um, purple and white top bag for your special one. Click, um, click below to view or something like that. I always add a call to action. A call to action is telling the customer what to do. Click below. Uh, click below to browse my shop. Click below to to shop today. Uh, click below to learn more. Um, click here to to save twenty. Always tell them what to do. So you always want to add a call to action. Don't put the links here. You put it when you're doing the post, but after that you delete it. You put the caption and it will still open. If I click on the picture, it opens. You see, because this is already a hyperlink. You don't need this right here. So I will remove that. Um, you are posting on a consistent basis, I believe. So in that sense, you're doing a really good job with that. Um, my other suggestion would be don't post all the time your items. Like, um, one, the pictures are a little cut off. So what I would do is the pictures that you have on Etsy are not optimized for Facebook, in other words. Um, so this picture here, you see, it's a square. So this is probably like, Let's say this is a thousand by a thousand. Well, the pictures on Facebook are like 700 by 400. So if you take the link here, put it here, right? Like this one, it's going to out of populate that picture, but it's going to cut it off because it's going to optimize it for Facebook. So this does, I mean, if I was to look at this, I don't know what I'm looking at. It looks like a handkerchief. It could look like a paper. So I would just redo these over. You could leave these now for there. But what I would do is from here on, <laughs> An easier way to do is upload. You could take this picture here, right? So you could do this. Take the picture, save it to your desktop, right? And then when you are loading the picture, right? Let's say I'll do it on my page so you can see what I mean. You upload the picture. Don't put the link yet. You upload the picture first. So you upload the picture. Then you go here. Um, you grab the, the link, right? You copy that link, and then you go to bit.ly.com. Bit.ly.com lets you shorten down that link. That way it doesn't look so spammy. You see how long it is? It looks ugly. So you go here. Do you see how long? So you go here. You make it short. You copy really quick. Bit.ly is free. And another nice thing to do is that you could track how many people click on that link. So once you sign up, um, you'll be able to, it's link management. You'll be able to see um, on Facebook, 10 people click on the link. And that way it actually tells you what products 
people are actually clicking on and what products people are not clicking on. So I do recommend for you to sign up for Bitly. So you go back to your page, right? And you say, hey guys, get this beautiful, be get this, sorry, I can't even think straight. I have such a headache. Get this beautiful purple top band for your special one. I don't know, but you know what I mean. So you create the thing and the caption and you put click here to shop. And then you put the link, you see, and then you post. And that's all you have to do. But you see how the picture now comes up? But if you use the actual link, right, first, it's going to upload. It's going to upload it, but you see how it gets cut off? You don't want to do it that way. So do it the opposite way. You could do it this way. Or you could use a software like Canva.com, or you could use a software like Photoshop like I do to resize the picture. But if you don't want to do all that, this is the quickest way that you could do it without having to resize the picture and it won't get cut off. So I'll go ahead and delete this from my page. I just wanted to kind of show you how to do it real quick. Other than that, on Facebook, that's my biggest suggestion. You have to do the same on the Google Plus. Um, some of your, oh, on Google Plus, I'm sorry. The actual picture does come up. The only thing I would change is this. Do not just leave the link there. Write a description um, about it. It makes it look better. It makes it look more professional. So definitely go ahead and change that. And on Twitter, here's the same thing. The picture is getting cut off. Um, but as you can see, when you tweet it, it looks so much better because it does have like the description on the top. And that's because when you tweet from XE, tweet XE actually pulls that description that you wrote originally. So that's the nice thing about them. But this is how it should be. This is an example of what it should look like. Um, I would just add a couple hashtags at the end and a call to action. But some of these are cut off as well. And you could just do the same strategy that I just did on Facebook. You could do that on Twitter. You could upload the image and then put the link. And that way it doesn't cut off. And it's so much better. So make sure you do that. With Twitter, so you could grow your Twitter, I would say follow about five to ten people per day. Follow people that are are your customers, people that will buy your products, like women from whatever age to whatever age. The way that you could kind of see who likes your products is that you could go to your Etsy stats and you could see like who are liking your product, the demographics and all that. And that helps you like narrow down your target audience. And if you don't know your target audience, it's important that you start paying attention to who they are because those are the people that you want to target later on, whether you do a Facebook ad or you're following people on social media. So make sure that you pay attention to that. And Reddit, I don't really use Reddit. I know that a lot of people um, do say it's really, really good. And I've been wanting to use it. I haven't done it yet. Um, the only thing I didn't understand was that when I click here, it doesn't show like the picture. I don't know if that's supposed to be that way or not. So I didn't want to give you any critique on that because I really don't know anything about it. So, um, I would say maybe read more articles about Reddit and how to use it properly if you're not doing so. If you are using it properly, then disregard what I just said. Um, but if you feel like you could improve on it then it's worth trying to see, um, trying to learn more about it, especially because I'm not able to give you any pointers on it. And lastly, um, Pinterest. Again, great job. You have your branding. You have your link. I will add a tag. You could do a tag here. I will add a tag. I believe you could do location as well. People like to see location. I don't know why. Also, people like to buy in the U.S. for some reason, so... Um, if you are in the, I believe you are in the U S, um, make sure you add that and hmm, I can't look this up, but anyways, let me go back. Let me see real quick. I wanted to show you, um, something really quick. Maybe I need to put it together. So this is one of my Pinterest accounts. And I grew this Pinterest account in the last 90 days. 
while I was pregnant and gave birth to my son. And I grew it to 276,000 monthly views. Um, for the month of July, I have already over 800 clicks from Pinterest to my Etsy shop. And I wanted to, um, almost like what you did, I put all my, all my listings on the top, as you can see. And then all the ones that are pinned from other people, I put it in the bottom. The thing with Pinterest, the most important thing I could tell you is pin, 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 pin as much as you can. That's just how it works. Pin every day. Even if you, if you don't have time, do like 10 minutes every day. Do like all your listings. Repin them. Put a board with all your listings just like how you did yours. And then on the bottom, repin your your pins to those folders as long as it goes in that fold in that category. Make sure that you have a picture, make sure you have everything filled out, optimizing the inside of it. Um, like making sure you have this filled out here because these are keywords that drive more traffic to your Pinterest account. But it really does work. I mean I, I did this as a case study and I was able to drive my Pinterest traffic from like barely two people per day. Um, to now uh, have over 800 this month. This has been my highest month. So I definitely do love Pinterest. I think it's a great resource that you can use to channel and drive tons of traffic to your Etsy shop if done properly. The key is to do it every day. <laughs> Excuse me. The key is to do it every day to grow it. Um, but you have the right mindset because you have all your stuff on the top and then you have... <laughs> additional pins on the bottom and so just keep doing that and when you least suspect it you start growing it and growing every month <laughs> excuse me so these are my suggestions for growing your XC shop I think you have a beautiful shop and with a little bit of work and adding more pictures and I do it <laughs> so I'm so sorry and doing your SEO and working on social media you should be able to at least increase engagement, increase, increase impressions, and drive more traffic to your XT shop. So thank you again, Milo, for letting me do a review of your shop, of your beautiful shop. And if you have any questions, make sure you email me. Um, if you like this tutorial, guys, uh, support your girl by giving her a thumbs up. I just did this video, and I feel really, really sick, and I still did it. So give me a thumbs up, please. Um, if you want to learn more about XT, or yourself want to critique, uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to this channel. Leave me a comment. I'll always reply back on the next necessary steps for you to go ahead and sign up. I also will leave a link on the link on the text box below with a link where you could go ahead and sign up for your XC critique. So thank you guys for watching. Have a great night.